Welcome to Make a Path Presents. I'm Ronnie Hayes, and today, let's talk The Walking Dead, Season 6, Episode 11, Afterthoughts. All right, guys, before we jump into this, I want to let you know I took some of Abraham... Nope. I took all of Abraham's discussion in the afterthoughts and I'm putting it in its own video. There's so much and I think it's so deep that it deserves its own video. So be on the lookout for that. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet, but I do have another video where it's um, Abraham's fate comic versus show. It's not that one. That one is going to deal with more comic book stuff. So if you don't want comic book stuff, don't go near that video, but look for, I'm going to put in the thumbnail Abraham, Sasha, and um, Rosita. So look out for that one because I, if, especially if you're an Abraham fan, I think that there's a real deep story they're building with Abraham. And also I got videos with um, Daryl and then Daryl and Dwight. Just a bunch of little splinter topics. Go and check those out. All right, let's jump into this. Um, the Rick, Michonne, and Carl. I love how they didn't have Carl being a little wine ass or bitching or moaning or maybe uh, you know, something, maybe silent. I love how he was just like, okay, it's cool. Because we need to move on. We don't have time for that shit. There's too much coming. Not only that, it doesn't fit the character. Carl's cool with Michonne. He loves Michonne. So move it on. Moving on. Uh, we got more of Denise and Daryl, and I love that. Listen, I'll, I'll, I'll say this right now, and to the fans I'm going to offend, uh, your dicks. <laughs> the fans that said, oh, I don't like Denise, the comic fans, because she's fat or too fat or whatever it was, uh, that's bullshit. I love Denise. She is growing on me more and more with every episode she's in. She's becoming one of my new favorite Alexandrian residents. Uh, love her. In this, in the episode prior to this, before this, I think that casting was perfect. And I'll be honest with you, hell, the comic version, she might be a skinny little twig. Uh, TV version isn't, but that doesn't matter. Look at Gregory. In the comic, he's a fat ass. On the show, not so much. And he's perfect. He's one of the best parts in this episode, besides the what. <laughs> that was epic. All right, so um, I do love Denise, but what I'm thinking is maybe they're trying to build on some relationship between Denise and Daryl. Not a, a romantic one at all. I'm talking about a pl platonic one, more of a friendship that's going to build. And maybe there's something where Tara either gets injured or dies, preferably dies. Uh, injured, it wouldn't really make sense. But if she dies, you know, it would also bring Denise and Daryl closer together, or maybe one or the other they can uh, build story off of that. Again, not you know, intimate relationship. I'm not talking about getting involved in any aspect, any way, shape, or form. Right now, I'm just strictly talking about as far as friends or it's, I don't know, it's hard because I can't put my finger on it, but I think it's going to be intertwined somewhat, or at least I'm speculating at the moment it will be intertwined, okay? Uh, let's move to finding or helping the hilltop people, especially the doctor. I feel like it did two things for the, the episode and the story. The one, obviously, is Glenn and Maggie because they found the doctor. They got medicine. They got vitamins. You know, they got um, help and assistance and tips and information. I mean, advice. Just bam. That sets up that storyline, makes it believable. It, it works perfectly into the story. Uh, it helps being realistic, I mean. You know, because I get a chick pregnant in the apocalypse, what the hell do I know? You know, without Google at my fingertips, you know, we're screwed. So it helps on that front. The second thing it does is Abraham. Now, Abraham almost chokes out this guy, and that plays a crucial moment in the story, especially for Abraham's character development. And I'm going to give you a little hint. The other video, I'm going to talk about Abraham surviving. He's in survivor mode, and then he's in embracing life mode. Let's put it that way. Uh, survivor mode on the way to Hilltop, embracing life on the way home to Alexandria at the end of the episode. Speaking of the Hilltop, it looks amazing. Uh, and they built this. They built this set. They built the fence. They built. They got the trailers in there. They built that house. I know a couple people were like, oh, that's, that's pretty good CGI. It looks real. Dude, that's real. They built that shit. So, and that's huge props. I mean, that's 
awesome. Anyway, we got Cal from the comic book. He's up there with his little spear, being a dick, just like he was in the comic. The music is on point. It had like this old uh, rusty western, I want to call it. <laughs> uh, but the music really put you in that mood, in that vibe. And yes, it is a little bare, especially when they're panning up and we saw a bare area with a couple people here and there however all throughout the episode from that point on they show people getting water feeding chickens however I think that was the same person and then they show the girl washing the clothes a guy walking up to her and even though they're showing these people and I give them props for that but these are the same people we already saw the guy walking is the doctor the, the chick there washing the clothes um, she was I, with them that they saved with the doctor. I believe they're together. At least it seemed that way. Then you have the chick feeding the ducks and getting water. It looked like the same girl. So here's the thing. It does feel bare. I mean, I thought we were going to get to the hilltop and see, you know, a couple hundred people, maybe 50 people at least. And it just felt like we saw a fraction of what I was expecting or realistically what we should see. I mean, who put up the walls? Who? I don't know. Anyway, moving on. I'm hoping that's something they can correct for season seven. I do know, again, they built this. So they do have to play with the budget somewhat. And it's a give and take, you know, you got to uh, take away some people in the hill in the hilltop and put that towards I don't know building the damn thing so we do have to cut them some slack at least a little bit honestly although it wouldn't kill them to give more money to the budget just saying and I don't think I need to go crazy any more than I already did in the first impression review over Gregory I watched it the second time and I still love this casting so very excited for any moment that Gregory's in the story even though you know he's being a slime ball a dirt ball he just makes it that much more entertaining great casting great actor uh, he nailed every single line he had in this episode there's nothing more I can say he nailed every line he's a perfect choice for this I'm very excited for his entire story season six and seven and eight and however long he's going to be on the show uh, I do love though when Rick is like uh, I, you wash up, Maggie. You go talk to him. Uh, I shouldn't, you know, because that it's showing signs of the Rick that I love when I uh, watch the show. Because we knew he was going to get there. It was kind of like a cheat. We knew he would get to that badass Rick. And then watching, I don't know if you guys remember all the hate Rick was getting in the beginning of the series, in like season two, uh, even maybe parts of three. Yeah, I would say parts of three. Slowly when we came out of three and into four, especially when he bit that guy's throat out, the end of four and into five i think he won over a whole new level of fans now that we're in season six and you know all the fans are going nuts over rick grimes i think a lot of us forget that in season two a lot of the bitching was like you need to listen to shane grow a set of balls oh you're gonna keep randall alive you don't want to kill him you pussy you know <laughs> so it's interesting when you look back uh, at that and see all the bitching and complaining <laughs> this is the rick I, we love i mean i love this rick especially when rick is like listen we came all this way for food we're gonna get it you know <laughs> uh that's great and we see maggie stepping up and i touched on this briefly before i know a lot of people were pushing for carol but I, we can put that aside uh and we know now like officially maggie is taking that storyline the only thing that can sidetrack maggie from t taking the comic storyline i don't want to get spoiler here is her dying which that's not going to happen so that makes some promo that they aired recently very interesting don't talk about that in the comments just chill i'm going to do a video on that soon go there and talk about that <laughs> oh you know what i do want to touch on one more thing the group talks as a whole and i love that we have daryl being like oh we're gonna we're gonna take out negan you give us this this and a cow or something like out of nowhere some crazy shit like that <laughs> i was like yeah daryl yeah Dar wait what a cow <laughs> no I, I get it but it was funny though how he just said that at the last he was like w w you with us half your stuff and this and a duck and a cow 
and a crossbow. Michonne later on will say, we can make it work. Maggie pipes up, Glenn pipes up, when they're making deals with uh, the hilltop and talking to Jesus, it, you know, they, they're all adding bits and pieces to the negotiations, and they don't have to even huddle anymore and put their heads together. They're like a well-oiled machine, and that is freaking great. Uh, another thing, I want to wrap this up, so I want to get right into the Nathan or Ethan. Is it Nathan or Ethan? Because in the comic it was Ethan, but Gregory sounds like he's saying Nathan. Even in the subtitles on Amazon, it was Nathan. Uh, but the other guy, after Daryl like kind of breaks his arm, he was like, Ethan! It I don't know. It sounded like one or the other. But listen, we get the comic... Uh, scene where Ethan Nathan stabs Gregory, Rick and them fight, Abraham and them fight, and I think that's an important part for Abraham's story that I talk about in the other video. We get Rick cut the guy in the throat, and I think that was perfect. I tried to watch it twice, and it looked great. He jammed that thing up in there, and you could just see it come out and pour, and it didn't look like CGI, and it just looked awesome and I'm talking about like the cut you know I know they had a tube and blood gushing you know because that was just great all of that was perfect his what is now one of the most iconic scenes in The Walking Dead and they killed that and there's a lot of pressure on them to get that right for Andrew to get that line right for the fans for millions of fans that's a lot of pressure so they did that scene perfect then you have Michonne slamming that bitch down in the dust like yeah you you chill bitch you know what I mean uh, that entire scene was perfect I do want to touch on something since we're here remember in the other video I said in the comic he said it like a boss well that's what I'm talking about in a TV show and the comic they do essentially say the same thing but in the comic Jesus was you know more aggressive he, his face was he was screaming and yelling not all chill he comes up and he's like listen uh, he does call him a coward but the way he says it was badass he's like let's not forget he's a coward and he deserved to die you know because he comes in and he's like we all loved Ethan but let's not forget da 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 he deserved to die he killed it that's what I'm talking about in the comic you know Jesus was he held that shit down um, but in the show, it was kind of just like, hey, I'm Jesus, chill out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but to finish this off, I do want to go back and look at some foreshadowing, but this is where I want your thoughts and opinions. Uh, I want your thoughts and opinions on this episode and touch on some things I left out. And if I left out other stuff, go watch the First Impressions review and also watch uh, the, the Splinter discussion videos, especially Abraham's, because I'm loving that more and more. Um, but I want to talk about the foreshadowing. Because because you guys know in my recent Q&A, I said who I'm picking. And uh, it looks like they're, they're doing some form of foreshadowing or maybe they're just teasing the fans. Maggie, for example, one example. Maggie's looking out the window and she's watching that girl on her knees with her dead boyfriend or husband or whatever. Uh, and that is a little hint, possible foreshadowing for Maggie's future. And she also says... Maggie and Glenn's future and she also says this is gonna cost us something so it's looking pretty thick for foreshadowing and I don't believe it's Daryl and I got a Daryl and Negan season 7 storyline that I think fits too perfect because it feels like they're already setting that up uh, that that relationship anyhow and no they're not gay <laughs> anyhow thoughts and opinions and everything I asked for down in that comment box I'm done talking it's your turn Subscribe now.